Hello violinists, welcome to Program Strings. I'm Henriette and today is day 35 of the Virtual Violin Practice Play Along. I'm so excited to see you here again. Thanks very much for showing up today and sharing this practice with all of us. Today we're going to continue with our Sautier bowing practice. We're going to review our position changing and we're going to develop further our string crossings and then we're going to keep going with our improvisation and our improvisations are now getting to a level where they're really, really presentable and much further advanced. So without much further ado, let's go and get started. <laughs> tuning your violin. Here is your A. two notes sound together. So here's A and E. first of all and we're going to just shake our hand to get the sautier bowing movement going so what you want to do is pretend you've got something sticky on your hand and you're trying to shake it off like that and it's that downward throw that is the bow stroke of sautier so as we said before sautier is one of the very fast bow strokes a type of staccato you could say but on very fast notes in your music. So let's pick up your bow and let's just get practicing that sautier bowing in the middle on the D string, roughly in the middle. You officially have to play your sautier bowing where the stick and the hair are closest together so that is different for every bow. In my bow, on my bow it's roughly the middle. So now we're going to go and shake your hand down like that and allowing the bow to give you a response on your throw. So when you feel that the bow wants to come up and start jumping on you, please try and allow it to jump. And that's perhaps the hardest part of the sautier bowing. So here we go, off you go. for it to get enough momentum to start to bounce and you want to feel how hard or how soft you need to shake your hand and then not interfere with it and by not interfering with it I mean do not squeeze the bow do not grip it at all if you possibly can so that you allow the bow to do its own job it's made to do this so you must allow it to do its work as it's made shall we try it again so Find your right spot first of all, 
and off you go. You start shaking your hand. <laughs> practicing it I want you to experiment by coming a little bit closer to the bridge perhaps and you may get a better response from your bow in other words it may jump up better at you when you play closer to the bridge where the string is just that little bit tighter than when you're a little bit further away there is some more movement in the string here compared with where you're closer to the bridge so let's do that come a little bit closer to the bridge Find the narrowest point and then you shake off that little cobweb off your hand. Here we go. and let's move the bow a little bit away from the bridge and let's see how that works for you. Off you go. Oh, that is nice. And now I want you to experiment this last time when we play the sautier, before we take a rest for your wrist, Move the bow gradually towards the bridge and then move the bow gradually away from the bridge to see where it works in your particular case, with your particular bow, with your particular string tension. Let's see how that works the best, where it works the best, I should say. Here we go. <laughs> section below this video what you find what your findings are because uh, I've just found out that if I am too close to the bridge it bounces less however if I'm just fairly close to the bridge it bounces more and I can perhaps be a little bit more relaxed with my hand if I move the bow away from the bridge a little bit more so I would like you if you can to observe what's just happened and then write about it in the comments section. We're getting into quite fine detail of violin playing. That's awesome, really good. Now, um, it's been some time since we last played our position changing. So let's catch up with that again and let's refresh our memory on it. We were saying position changing is very much about swinging your left arm. So let's do that. And now we're going to move our elbow out and swing it under as we slide our finger up. And then as before we go down the position and change the position downwards, we're pushing the left elbow further under and then swinging it back. So position changing for me is swing out and under, push further under, swing back, out and under, push further under, swing back. And we're going to do a B minor scale again, if you remember. Let's, you can listen, if you can't remember, that's okay. I'll play it for you first and then we'll play the second time. Here we go. And. Very good. So now let's join in all together 
and this time I want you to make sure that you slide really slowly okay so we don't want this see if you can gradually move up and that way you increase your feel for the fingerboard if you go slowly so that is what we're doing your bow is also being affected by the slow playing of the left hand in that it goes super smooth. Try not to jerk your bow in other words. Ready and to expand our knowledge a little bit and we're going to start at the top so let's slide to the top and this time we're going to go down one position and back up again down two positions and back up again I'll show you how that goes and something else isn't it shall we try that again let's find the top B okay you will notice that at the top here the notes are all relatively close together especially since you go from B to A sharp um, so only a semitone down on your first shift but as you go further down the fingerboard you want to put relatively more elbow swing in because you're going to travel bigger distances don't you so here's my b off we go join in with me if you like and Well done if you worked that one out. Now, if you find that a little bit tricky and confusing, that's okay, that's completely understandable. You might try it a few times and experiment with it a little bit in your own time. And I'm sure that we're going to come back to this another day again. So let's now move on to our string crossings. You see, we'll work a little bit on the left hand and then a little bit on the right hand again. And in our previous days, we were combining string crossings with our elbow, I don't know if you remember, with the string crossings with your wrist. And we were particularly thinking about clockwise circles with your wrist. And we're going to do that same exercise again, because we're always doing something old and something new uh, in our lesson. So this is the something old that we've done before. So your first finger is on B, on the A string here, first finger. And we're going to start on the G string, playing two notes slurred. I'll show you how it goes first. Okay, so use your elbow, two notes slurred first. And now you're going to use your clockwise circles with your wrist to go B, A, B, D, B, D. Go back on B and now use your elbow to go back to the D string. And go even 
and higher with your elbow as we're back on G now. Wrist. just focusing and homing in on one thing whether it is your elbow or it is your wrist you will improve all the pieces that you have string crossings in which is virtually every single piece that exists isn't it so we're fine-tuning every single detail of your technique so well done for sticking with me and thank you so much for putting your faith in me and following this course and aren't you doing great on day 35 and we're still together. Isn't it lovely also to think of all these people across the world that are all practicing these exercises with us all. So if you find this tricky, rest assured there are lots of people who are confused about some of the exercises and that's okay. We're gradually getting out of that confusing uh, confusion and making things clearer with your technique. Well done. So let's now keep it nice and easy and play. we're going to play our G major scale with legato bowing. Checking out your stance. Okay, so be loose and flexible in your knees. Don't lock your knees. In other words, so step forward a slight little step with your left foot so we get a flexible motion here. Be careful, that doesn't turn into a sort of compulsive rocking. It's just being loose, okay? When we bow, we're pointing our bow hand forwards in every down bow, and thereby we keep our right shoulder down. So keep stretching your bow arm forwards. We're playing every note of the scale twice, and in recent days we've been adding our fourth finger at the top of the scale, just to give that pinky a little bit of extra practice. Here we go, and... <laughs> coming back to this legato bowing. If you can play a proper legato, really relaxed and intense bow stroke, your tone quality across everything that you do will be enhanced. So that's why we keep going on about it. So let's now play a G major arpeggio in the same style. And as you play this arpeggio, I want you in your head to go over all these techniques. Is my bow straight? Is my shoulder down? Am I not uh, tightening my knees or my legs? And am I playing the whole bow? So here we go. And... <laughs> Improvisation and today we're going to be improvising again 
from the key of G major to the key of D major to the key of G major. So we're doing three sections of improvisation with a modulation to the dominant in the center and then a modulation back to the first degree of the scale. Does that sound like gobbledygook to you? <laughs> I'll tell you what that means. This is the official way of saying it. We're starting in the key of G major, so we're having one sharp, which is the F sharp. Then our next section is in the key of D major, which is called the dominant, the fifth degree of the G major scale. And in the D major scale, where we're playing our middle section, we're adding a C sharp to our playing. So you must play the C sharp in your middle section to indicate that you've modulated to D major. In the third section, however, we're back into G major. So we're taking that C sharp that we've added in our middle section, we're taking it out. So you must not play a C sharp at the end, otherwise you don't get that feel for the key of G major. So let me give you an example and I want you to start thinking also about adding sequences to your playing, adding louds and softs to your playing, adding special effects to your playing and adding uh, staccato or legato. So you've got so many different things that you can add. Um, feel free to put in as many of these aspects as you possibly can. However, if you're still struggling with the notes, that's okay because that's understandable, that's complicated. Don't worry about all these extras, but if you are that little bit further ahead, I'm giving you options, you see? So let me give you an example and I'll play my three sections without interruption and then it's your go. G major, here it is. <laughs> So what just happened? Did you hear the sequencing in my playing? I played uh, in the key of G major a section and then I played the exact same section again, a sequence uh, starting on the D. So that made my sequence into the key of D major and then I just varied it a little bit adding staccato notes as I came down back into G major again. So shall we have another go? And let's see if you can do some sequencing or some special effects or some louds and softs or some staccato or legato. <laughs> Sweet, that's coming along, isn't it? Shall we have another go? Um, 
today might be your day so feel free to do lots more later on today and then again today might be your off day so so don't worry about it tomorrow might be a better day if that's you okay here we go we'll do our final one of the day Awesome. And I can't get over the fact how incredibly well you've come along with this from starting in day one with just playing some open strings to now using the full range of all the notes in the first position in different keys. That is just an astonishing achievement. So well done for sticking with this course. And you can see the progress that you've made. Congratulations. That is really, really superb. So we're going to push on with this next time. So I'm hoping you will join me again. But for now, I thank you for sticking with me right through to the end of this video. And I very much look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.